Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Morning. Ladies and gentlemen, man, we got one of the good guys with us today. Yes, yes. I, I must say here, you know, um, a guy who's been putting it down for a while. We were just talking to a group yesterday. If you recall, Tracy G. Of course. And I was making a point that, you know, a lot of times we hear a name and we see a video and we see a person, but, you know, we, we judge it by that cover or, or from, from that moment, not realizing how much work they put in, hmm. you know, how much brick bricks that they laid to get to the point that they are now. Uh, one of those people that fit that description is with us right now. It's the one, the only smoke dizzer is here. Woo! Smoke dizzer. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks Rolling Stones, me, smoke dizzer. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good to have you, man. Oh, um, man. Glad to I, be here. I remember first, when I first caught wind of you, High Tech was around back then, right? Wow. I didn't know you went back because High Tech was a... That was my homie, you know. Um, um, you know, he, High Tech used to come by the Wake Up Show with King Tech and myself back in the day, and you know the music he was doing with Talib and all the different things he's done uh, with his career, man. So anybody that was affiliated to him got the instant dope credibility, right? So right, right. Back right. then, you know, yeah, that um, was crazy. Let's talk about your beginnings for those who may not know Smoke Dizza. What 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 inspired you to uh, get into rap? Well, um, Biggie Smalls inspired me to get mm-hmm. into rap really um listening to life after death as mm. as a kid mm. um i used to rewrite his rhymes and make my own renditions of them and shit word yeah like what do you mean give me an example like i would rewrite mo money mo problems and switch up the words and really i would write his whole shit down first just to read what he was actually uh-huh. saying and then that's how i i kind of learned how to make rhyme patterns and shit mm. and then i started rewriting them into my own way and then you know the creative process kept going from there. So, I mean, that was the inspiration. And then, you know, it led to me penning and doing shit for other people. And then, you know, really still building my craft. And I'm right here right now. That was kind of genius right there. You kind of stumped me right, right. there. <laughs> like, you know, uh, why not? That makes sense. Biggie made hit records that were appealing to people. Mm-hmm. The things that made it, the ingredients to that was his wordplay, his vocabulary, the stories he told, but the patterns in which he told them. Yeah. That's what made him the most unique to me. Damn. Do you remember any of those uh, rhymes? The renditions? Nah. Nah? Okay. I wish I could. Okay, damn. I almost got you with that, man. You saw that coming around the corner. Yeah, I saw that coming. You saw that? (laughs) I almost got him. Uh, And and, and so then from there, um, how did you, what was your first break? My first break, um... Well, as Smoke Dizzard, the artist, my yeah. first break might have been uh, Substance. Well, actually, George Cush the Button. George Cush the Button. George Cush okay. the Button was actually where people really started to that mixtape, recognize the mixtape, the the mixtape, mixtape George Cush, which yeah. actually turned into an album and ended up going in stores and shit afterwards. But um, that was where people really started to recognize, like, oh, this kid's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, you know, before that, it was just you know building the groundwork and doing different shit to get to that level. So. Born and raised in Harlem? Born and raised in Harlem. Um, Harlem Hospital, baby. Harlem Hospital. Damn, I'm Highland Hospital in Oakland. Hey. Actually, Kaiser. Mother worked at Kaiser. Uh, Highland, my bad. Uh, this <laughs> is, is an acronym for? Dream Zone Achieve. Where did you come up with that? Um, I came up with that a few years ago after mm-hmm. um everybody used to ask me, like, yo, well, what does Dizzle mean? And really, Dizzle was just short for dog at one point, like when the whole for shizzle my nizzle. Shit oh, came Dizza. Out. Yeah, yeah. That's how the dog turned into Dizza. I actually got to tell Snoop that story, and he was like, pumped. Like, yeah, nephew, I named you. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, the dog turned into Dizza, and uh-huh. then, you know, Dream Zone Achieve was the acronym I made out of it because that's really what I did to get to where I'm at. Now, um, Dame Dash and you came up to, um, Rap Fix last week on MTV Jams. We do it every Wednesday. Um, 4 p.m. Eastern. Hey. And that was one of the best conversations I've had in a long time. Yeah, that was a fun time. Funny as hell. <laughs> Dame is so smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You man. know, um, how did you get con- how did you first get connected with Dame? Well, um, I first got connected with Dame going through DD one seventy two. Mm-hmm. Um Explain that. Well, uh D D one seventy two was like a compound. It was like a playhouse, mm-hmm. a dojo, as they will call it. For um rappers like everybody from all different 
parts of the world. Like that's where I met Currency, Staley, J Electronica, um, Rugs D Beulah, uh, Big Crit. Everybody was working in a dojo at one point and it was just you know a creative place to be because everybody was creative you know they had the art they had the rap and then you know we smoke weed so mm-hmm. that really brings people together yeah so um, so we've heard yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, stories you know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so um being there and uh you know dame that was dame's establishment and yeah. he used to come down and sit in my sessions as i would work with ski beats and shit and you know he would always be like damn nigga Shit, like, yeah, man, you got some shit. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it really, we was cool, but you know, shit started to get a little crazy, and then the DD one seventy two shit ended, and then we parted ways for like three years. But that's how I got with him. What got crazy? Um, every everything. Everybody got crazy. says that shit got crazy, but what shit got, got crazy. What it was just, crazy for you? What you thought was crazy? Um, it just started to just become a madhouse over there at one point. Yeah, it was just like too crazy and then um he had to shut it down like all right it's over everybody go home so uh after the building was closed there wasn't no reason for anybody to go over there so i think uh bloomberg was on his head for that building really yeah the mayor bloomberg was on his head for the building <laughs> yeah. what do you mean on his head trying to trying to buy the building or mad because of what was going on in the building i think he was mad because of was what was going on in the building did or he whatever i mean you know they always try to find a way to hate on dame yeah. Some type of way. Some type of way. Yeah. Uh, this one I want to do, man. I want to um, play one of your songs off the uh, the new project. It's called uh, Dream Zone Achieve. And yes. it's broken off in like, it's, it's like, it feels like it's three parts, right? Yeah, it's three acts. It's three it's acts. Three acts. Yeah. I, I wanted to uh, switch it up three times so everybody can get that feeling. Like uh, the first seven songs mm-hmm. is dream and you have that feeling of that ambitious feeling. And then uh, the other half, is zone where it's like the hustle, the mentality of putting it together, and then the next half is achieved where it's like you know it's all a celebration. Okay. So I wanted to give that feeling three times in the project because it could have been a double CD, but you know, you I know, gave it away for ten dollars. You on gave iTunes. it away, gave it away, man. Uh, yeah. Ghost of Dipset is a song you have on it featuring Cam. I want to play that, and then we're going to open up the phone lines, 888-742-3345. Damn. Like Ghost of Dipset. <laughs> Ghost of Dipset. Why you call it that? Why you title this song that? Because when I heard the beat, I felt like the Ghost of Dipset was in the room. I actually did that song before it got to Kim. Uh-huh. I did that shit like a year and a half. I put it in the air before I even met the, before I even met Cam. I did that song, so. Did, did the Cam come in the studio, or he just got the track? Oh, nah. We was in the studio together. Yo, yeah, yeah. I got to watch him create that. And how does Cat? Had, how does he create? Does he use a pen and a pad? Um, I actually he might have been and he might have meant went mental with it, or he might have been doing it on his phone. But uh-huh. the way that shit came out so fast, I was just like, damn. So you right. friend, you're friends with all these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, in the studio with Cam. And I'm gonna ask you the same question about Dame. What kind, did he tell you like some legendary dip set stories? Like what? yo, being with them with Cam, Jim, Dame, I always hear the crazy stories. Like uh Cam was telling me this story one time how he met uh Lawrence Fishburne in a, in the airport before um he really gained his success and um one of his peoples called him Larry and he didn't like to be called Larry. Mm-hmm. And um he went crazy on one of them and Cam ended up cursing him out or some shit like that. And then years later, <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne sent a message through one of Cam's people. He was like, yo, tell Cam I fuck with him. So I guess he didn't remember that he got cursed out by him. But yeah, I hear all types of crazy wow. stories. No, no, no. All he remembered he got cursed out by him. That's what he said. <laughs> wow. That's probably why yeah. he said that. Yeah, I hear ton, <laughs> tons of crazy stories. Michael Jackson stories, how... Mm-hmm. Uh, Dame and Hove bought Mike out summer jam and shit. What did Dame say? Well, he was like, "Yo, man, we stun on niggas, man. Nigga, we bought Michael Jackson out. He didn't even know what he. He didn't even know what to do. He was just standing there. And then you see the picture, and you just see Mike got the help me face. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, so you know they they lived a lot of good eras. So yeah, I hear a lot of crazy stuff. How did that happen? Or was Jay writing for Mike or something? Or something? I don't even know. I gotta ask Dame that. That's a good question. That, now, do you ask Dame about like? Does he? Is it off limits to talk about Jay? Or do they? Or? Um, you know, I'm. <sighs> I'm one of them people, I don't really like to, if he wants to, you know, talk about it openly, yeah. I'll I listen. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I wouldn't be like, oh, what's up with all of it? I don't really be caring. We would just be just sitting there building, talking about all whole old Harlem shit, and, mm-hmm. you know, telling me what I should do more 
or what what I'm doing great and what I should continue to keep pushing. It's always like uplifting conversations. You know, we just said off the mic and stop me. If, it, ain't, well, it wasn't nothing that deep, but um, I was telling you what I like about you is I can't pinpoint what region you're from necessarily on certain songs. What what kind of gives you this ambiguous feel in a good way because. <clears throat> it, you don't regionalize yourself for, and there's so many artists from New York are so concerned about this New York sound. Yeah. And um, what the New York sound is in 2014, is it going to be the same as it was? It was in 1996. Yeah. So yeah. W- really, is what is that, and, and how does that serve uh, to your advantage to be from Harlem, but to appeal any and everywhere else, or to your disadvantage? Well, um... To my advantage, I mean, you know, it's unique, and it's um, it's it's actually my own sound. It's not like you know, I'm trying to sound like this person or trying to go nostalgia and sound like this person. I mean, you might catch the nostalgia from the production, maybe, or you know, the stories, the mm-hmm. way I tell my stories, because you know, I'm cut. I'm a Rockefeller bad boy baby. Yeah. Like I always tell people that, like, that was the era I was born into where I love music. That was my golden era. So I mean, you know, I don't really try to recreate what they what they did because you know they did that in their own way, and I feel like to be a great, you have to create your own sound and create your own path and your own sound. Yeah. And I feel like you know that's what I do. That's what you do, man. Yeah. Uh, we got Ashley on the line from Dallas. Good morning, Ashley. How you doing? Hi, how are y'all? Good morning. Doing great. Say hello to Smoke Dizza. What's your question? Hi, I was just wondering when you're going to come back out to Dallas. We miss you out here. Y'all miss me out there? I'm coming, man. I'm coming. I'm with Brick Flair right now, man. Tell, tell, Let Dallas know I'm with Brick Flair, and he's going to bring me back out there soon. I'm coming. All right. We got uh, Lopez is in Phoenix. Uh, Lopez, good morning. What's up, Lo? What up, man? What up? Say good morning, Sway. What good up, morning, man? Show. What up, Dizzle? What up, boy? Dang, been a minute since you've been out of Phoenix, man. I'm coming back, man. Don't <laughs> worry, man. I'm telling yo, I'm telling agency group, man, they need to route that tour already, man. I'm gonna come back out there, come fuck with y'all, man. Y'all got good uh, yeah, out that's there. what's up, man. I've been fucking with you since George Kush. Come Ooh. on, baby. I-, I hope you bought that Dream Zone Achieve, man. Oh, I already got it, man. My man. Yeah, it is. We man, we selling music today. Uh Frisco Kid out of San Francisco. What up, homie? What's up with you, big dog? How you feeling? Yeah. <laughs> Say what up to Smoke Dizzy. What up, Dizzy? You was fucking with my homie Burner, Burn Bigelow. Yeah, out man. Of, out of Burn. Burn Bigelow, that's my man, B. You know that the, the yeah, Bay man. got the best weed in the world, man. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my day one, man. We coming about the Cookie Fam right here. Oh, right uh, here yeah, up. yeah. Hey, tell Burn <laughs> I got that box of cookie clothing at my house here in Harlem. Okay, Fresco. Did he hang up? All right, yeah, burn. Let's go. Yeah, yeah burner, Shout boy. out to Big Burn. Yo, I, I, I told him to send me a T-shirt. He sent me like a cargo box mm. of like cookies, hoodies, and he's a good guy. I gotta do that for you too. And you live in Harlem. I just gotta bring the box shame, down the block. I'm gonna bring the box down the block. I'm not even gonna say that, man. But that's nah, a shame. That's fucked up. Burn made me feel bad, man. I gotta bring the box down. Don't the forget yeah. the size small. Clothes. Okay, I'm a, Tracy, I, got you. Got a, I got you. You got a question for him, Tracy? I do. Well, clearly up, you have a penchant for um, marijuana. Yes, I do. And I'm always very interested because personally, if I smoke, I'm the laziest motherfucker alive. Oh, but man. I know a lot of artists and make them very um, productive. So how often do you smoke? And do you ever just like lay out and say, <laughs> you know, I don't want to write nothing. I'm good. I'm well, stuck. I'm actually a functional pothead. So, um, mm. Mm. it actually kind of makes me want to work harder mm-hmm. if that's... If that makes any sense, like I'll smoke and get inspired to do more stuff. My brain will start working 10 times faster. So on an average day, how much do you smoke? You think? I honestly, it's <laughs> such, it's, that's such a, I don't even know. Really? Yeah, I don't even it's know. An arbitrary just, number. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, hold on, you got kids? I have kids, but I can't smoke in my house though. See, that's always the interesting yeah. part. Like when they get older, say, I don't know, when peer pressure starts to happen, like 12 or something like that, would you allow them to smoke with you? Would you rather nah, not? I, I'm like a square dad. Like <laughs> like the shit that I preach, I kind of not, I don't want to let them see what right. it is, even though they're like, they're like YouTube savvy and mm-hmm. they know what's going on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, when, hopefully that time doesn't come. And my kids are like squares and they don't want to do any of that. Got but, you. But if you catch them. But if them, it does, if I catch them. Uh-huh. I might have to be a dad and just, you know, lay the iron fist. Oh, but what? at 18, 19, I don't mean it's a different. Come here, different, roll up for pops. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and we done with the weed talk right yeah, here? Okay, yeah. smoke gizzards <laughs> here. <laughs>
You're listening to Sway in the morning on Shea 45.